New tonight, his radio show is a required stop for Democrats on the campaign trail. Charlemagne the God is host of The Breakfast Club radio show, best-selling author, and his interviews with the candidates are getting all the buzz. So, Bernie, 44 out of 45 presidents in this country have been white men. Do you think we need another one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you need this one. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhale. I did, in, I did inhale. inhale. <laughs> I'm dating somebody that, uh, that's really special, so. Oh, yeah. so Cory Booker got a boo. What about Chick-fil-A? You like Chick-fil-A? I do not approve of their politics, but I, I kind of approve of their chicken. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh you, my my, you my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, Charlemagne is with me now. All right, so. What's up, Aaron? How are you? This is, you get these moments. What do you think it is that makes them all say they, they've got to come in, talk to you? Well, I think they all come in because of our large audience. You know, I mean, Breakfast Club, we're listened to about 4 million, 5 million people weekly. And, you know, we have a very big following on, on the Internet. You know, our YouTube page is really massive. Follow yeah. us at Breakfast Club AM. I got to give all the credit to our large listening audience, the reason they want to show up. I'm going to ask you about the, some of those moments that we just played. Mm -hmm. but, but first, I don't want people to think that that's, that's all it is, because obviously those are moments that get a lot of buzz and everyone's talking about mm -hmm. them. But you also talk about some really serious type topics. Okay. Here are some examples. I think black people just have questions for people who may not know who exactly you are. So it's just yeah. basic questions. Like, so they say they want to know what did you do to hurt black people as a prosecutor? Because you said uh, you regret some things. Your uh, truancy program I got, got a lot of criticism, too. Did you actually yeah. lock anybody else? Does Cory I, Booker have a specific agenda for black people? And if, and if so, what is it? Now, why does it seem like this week you've been kind of dodging the reparations question? Tough question. So okay. who's been the least comfortable <laughs> talking about hmm. race so far? I, I would have to say probably Cory Booker. Only because it didn't seem like Corey had an answer at the time. Because I think for a long time, you know, Democrats have gotten the loyalty of the African-American community and they've gotten that loyalty, but haven't really done anything in return. So now you have a lot of black people saying no. Like, we want to know exactly what you're doing specifically for black people. We want to know exactly, you know, what type of agenda you have for African-Americans. And I think early on, a lot of the candidates didn't see the, that, that kind of energy coming. So they just weren't prepared, you know? So they've been used to just saying, hey, vote for me. I'm the opposite of whatever is on the other side, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and black people have just been loyal f to the Democrats for a, a long time for no reason. So I think early on, Corey came early, before like even the reparations conversation that really started and people started really asking about the black agenda. And I think he just wasn't prepared. So I want to play a little bit more of Kamala Harris on this mm -hmm. issue because you were bringing up sort of why is she saying certain things. Let me just play the whole exchange. I make the best greens you've ever had. Okay. I have friends who have asked me to make my greens for their Christmas parties. Um, now, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to tell you why, because they're going to turn that, is that, they're gonna turn that into a sound bite, and they're going to say that's one of them times you're pandering to black people, but she's black. No, but I'm black, yes. and I'm proud of being black. Absolutely. And I was born black, I will die black, and I'm proud of being black. And I'm not going to make any excuses for anybody because they don't understand. What did you think when she was talking about race? I, I felt like she was being genuine because she has no reason not to be. You know, sometimes I think we look at politicians and we just think that they're BSing us so much. So when she says something like that, you're looking at it like, come on, now you don't cook no collard greens. But then you got to check yourself and be like, why wouldn't she be able to cook collard greens? <laughs> why, like, 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 why wouldn't she? So... When it comes to these moments, right, Cory Booker talking about, I was, was, now we know, Rosario Dawson when mm -hmm. he made his comment about Abu, um, and then the Chick-fil-A exchange you had with Mayor Pete, who has felt the most comfortable in the setting? Oh, Mayor because Pete. Because this is not the usual stuff. This isn't like the CNN town hall format, right? Yeah. For some of these guys, this is uncharted territory. Yeah, Mayor Pete, and it's not even close. I mean, no, no, I mean, really? don't, Kamala seemed very comfortable, too, you know, but... but I just really like Mayor, Mayor Pete. I think Mayor Pete is, like, very authentic and very honest. And, you know, it's little things like that. Like, you know, even though he is a member of the LGBT community, not just 
you know, pandering and saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I don't like Chick-fil-A. I, I, I hate Chick-fil-A. That's, yeah, Chick-fil-A got good. <laughs> it's good. You know, so for him to see the nuance in it and be like, yeah, I, I don't like their politics, but I like their chicken. That's an honest answer. And he said something else about Eminem because I asked him about liking Eminem. And I'm like, Eminem has homophobic lyrics, but he didn't denounce that either. He goes, yeah, but he also empowers me being a white guy from the Midwest. So he's able to see the nuance in things. That's just honest and authentic. All right, so what would you ask President Trump if he was on the show tomorrow? That's a great question that I've never given any thought to, to be totally honest. Like, that would be one of those times where I would have to bring in all my brain trust and let's, like, <laughs> let's, let's really have the conversation. Because I think, honestly, anything, it's pointless to have a conversation with a guy like that, don't you think? But you, you were saying... And this is when you, you and I were talking before you mm -hmm. came out here. So I'm. You, you oh, know, that he's the most insecure man in the world. Well, you were saying that you think he does really care what people think about him. About him, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's all deflection. Like, that's all a front. Like, that whole I don't give a F attitude, that's all a deflection. Like, I think he's probably the most insecure man in America. Like, he probably goes home at night and cries because he knows that regardless of how much money he has, regardless of what, you know, position of power he's in, it's some things about him that he cannot change. Maybe he don't like the size of his hands. I'm serious. Like, it's something about him that makes him that insecure because he's a bully. And we all have had enough experiences with bullies in our life to know that most bullies are insecure. So I just think he's one of the most insecure people ever. And I really think he goes home at night and cries his eyes out. Well, Charlemagne, I really appreciate talking to you. Thank you.